Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, latest condition on a woman who's found stabbed at a San Antonio bus stop. Plus, President Donald Trump and Joe Biden are getting ready for tonight's much anticipated presidential debate. And for many South Texans, it's cold out there this morning. For the first time, it seems like this season, it is on the chilly side, mid 50s at San Antonio International Airport. We'll talk to Mike in just a sec. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, September 29th. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. I'm enjoying the cool weather. I was uh, texting one of our photographers. He's like, it's cold outside. I was like, it's nice outside. It's so. very refreshing <laughs> for a lot of folks. It seems like a month ago we were just about 100 degrees every day. Mike Ostrace joins us now with more on this delightful fall weather. It is, I don't even know if delightful, if you can really describe just how wonderful it is outside right now. Temperatures, just to compare, at this time yesterday we were at 80. Wow. And the front was just now moving through, so we are 25 degrees cooler right now and getting some 40s on the map. Comfort and Balverde both at 48 degrees, 55 here in town, 54 at Randolph, still a couple of leftover 60s there in Canyon Lake and New Braunfels. And we also have just bone dry air that front moved through. The humidity kept dropping down and dropping down. And so with clear skies, mostly clear skies, we got a couple of little leftover clouds here, but they really cleared out and we can, in theory, drop down even further. I'm going for 52 right now. Bumped it down uh, just a couple of notches uh, based on the fact that we're at 55 and we still have a couple of more hours of cooling to go. Molds on the high side that should be coming down in the next uh, well later on today in the next couple of days. Ragweed moderate fall elm is low and throughout the rest of today like I said 52 here in town and again especially in the hill country we're looking at mid and perhaps in some low lying areas even down into the lower 40s this morning. Clear skies spectacular sunrise and after school then 81 degrees huge warm up we're going to gain 30 uh, some areas 35 and even tomorrow close to 35 40 degree difference between the low and the high temperature absolutely fantastic how much longer does this just wonderful weather last details coming up in a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now on this Tuesday morning as great as the weather is Officer Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike, and good morning to you. Good morning, everyone at home. As we take a look at the roadways, uh, off to a pretty good start. You can see everything in the green as far as the main lanes of the highways are concerned. Let's move over to Transguide. I-10 and Medical, so far, no issues there for the eastbound and westbound lanes. More than enough room out there all the way through I-10 at Warsbach. Then take a look, 37 at Military Drive there on the southeast side. So far, no problems all the way through 37 at Pecan Valley. And let's move over here. Highway 90 at Nogalitos. Eastbound and westbound lanes so far running smoothly. Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, police in shirts are now confirming a major drug bust at a home there. 24-year-old Gage Sander and 27-year-old Connor Ross were both booked into the Guadalupe County Jail. Investigators say, along with marijuana, they found meth and cocaine. Six firearms and more than $1,200 in cash were also seized at that home on Crimson Cove on Friday. Well, San Antonio police say a woman was found at a bus stop last night with wounds to her throat and her stomach. It happened on the Southwest on uh, Southwest Military near South Flores Street. A man accused in the case was caught a couple of blocks away. The woman was taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Investigators say an argument led to this stabbing, but details weren't given on an exact motive. Officers suspect both the man and woman are homeless. There are now more than 1 million confirmed COVID-19 deaths worldwide, according to Johns Hopkins University. Nearly 5,000 deaths are reported each day on average. But there is some encouraging news here at home. This morning, the wording on the risk level bar has changed from safe to low risk for the green section. Our seven-day average has dipped below 150, and our positivity rate has also moved down to 5.9%. We are almost to the main goal, which is to be 5% and under. Right now, we have 220 COVID-19 patients in the hospital locally. No new deaths were reported. In your morning headlines, the debate many people have been waiting for. President Donald Trump, a Democratic nominee for former uh, Democratic nominee, former Vice President Joe Biden, set to face off tonight in their first in-person showdown of the 2020 presidential campaign. The first debate will be at Case Western Reserve University and the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. 
The impact of the pandemic will be evident as the two candidates won't partake in an opening handshake, which is usually what happens. The size of the audience will also be limited and everyone attending must undergo COVID-19 testing and follow other public health protocols. Both sides are grappling with how to respond to a New York Times report involving the president's taxes, as well as the fight to confirm a new Supreme Court justice. You can watch the debate smart tonight, starting at 8, right here on KSAT 12. Northern California's wine country is on fire again as strong winds fan flames in the already scorched region. The fire is destroying homes and prompting orders for nearly 70,000 people to evacuate. Meanwhile, three people died in a separate fire further north in that state. In Sonoma County, residents of a senior living facility had to be evacuated, some wearing bathrobes and having to use walkers. California's governor has declared a state of emergency in Napa, Sonoma and Shasta counties. Tampa Bay Lightning are the champions of bubble hockey. The Lightning beat. Fans or no fans are still celebrating. Yep, and you had a good season anyway, Dallas. Yeah. Time now, 436 and 55 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, an update on the health of actress Shannon Doherty has been battling breast cancer during the COVID-19 pandemic. And also next, the latest on the Breonna Taylor case as Kentucky's Attorney General is set to release a recording of the grand jury proceedings. And outside with live cam on your Tuesday morning, a chill in the air. And if you haven't seen them yet, you're going to want to pay extra attention to what folks in the Hill Country are experiencing in the more uh, this morning. Temperature wise, that's coming up on GMSA. A major development in the Breonna Taylor case overnight. Kentucky's attorney general has now agreed to make the grand jury transcripts, transcripts public. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has more. This morning, after nearly a week of outrage over the grand jury decision not to file murder charges in the Breonna Taylor case, release the transcript. A judge has ruled the hearing transcripts will be entered into the court record and made available to the public. The decision coming after one grand juror filed a lawsuit to release the transcripts. An attorney for the juror claiming the closed door proceedings were of compelling public interest. Overnight, Kentucky's Attorney General Daniel Cameron condemning the move, releasing a statement claiming our team has an ethical obligation not to release the recording from the grand jury proceedings. Adding, we stand by our belief that such a release could compromise the ongoing federal investigation and could have unintended consequences such as poisoning the the jury pool. Taylor's family has accused Cameron of slowing down the case since the beginning. I never had faith in Daniel Cameron to begin with. I knew he had already chosen to be on the wrong side of the law. Mm. The moment he wanted to, the grand jury to make the decision. On Monday, Hankinson pleaded not guilty to wanton endangerment for firing into a neighboring apartment. The only charges to come out of the grand jury indictment. The grand juror who filed the lawsuit wants to remain anonymous and says they felt compelled to act in a manner that promotes transparency. The transcripts are due to be released on Wednesday. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. Now 441, 55 degrees. <laughs> How nice. And still ahead, thanks to some class action lawsuits involving some major companies, you may be entitled to get some cash. Next actress Shannon Doherty opening up about her experience battling breast cancer, hoping to give some hope to those facing difficult trials during the pandemic. And welcome back. It's 444. Actress Shannon Doherty is offering an update on her health as she battles breast cancer. ABC's Kenneth Moten has that in this morning's GMA First Look. And this morning's GMA First Look has been nearly nine months since actress Shannon Doherty revealed to us that her breast cancer had returned. It's a bitter pill to swallow in a lot of ways. I would say that my first reaction is always concern about how am I going to tell my mom, my husband. You're worried about everyone else around you. I think so. Yeah. And this morning, Good Morning America is the first place you'll hear about how she's dealing with the fight of her life during a global pandemic. Doherty revealing to Elle magazine in an exclusive new interview that she's been quarantining in her Malibu home, saying, quote, I try to treasure all the small moments that most people don't really see or take for granted. The small things are magnified for me. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what the 90210 star is saying about her health, her family, and why she's not ready to give up her fight anytime soon. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York.
Well, certain iPhones, earphones, refrigerators, and even contact lenses are part of some class action lawsuits, and you may be entitled to some of that money. And as 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris explains, none of these companies are admitting to doing wrong, but by agreeing to settlements, they may put cash in your pocket. The clock is ticking for Apple iPhone owners to file a claim over Battery Gate. Apple settled a class action lawsuit over claims it was slowing performance to save battery life. If you owned an SE 6 or 7, including Plus models, you may be able to claim up to 25 bucks. But do it fast, the deadline is October 6. If you bought Apple Powerbeats 2 before August 7th, you can claim more cash. That lawsuit alleged the sports earphones wouldn't hold a charge. The estimated payout is $38 without proof of purchase, double with proof. Deadline is November 20th. Cold, hard cash. You're entitled if you own one of several LG refrigerator models. LG settled a lawsuit claiming a cooling defect, leading to spoiled food and repair bills. You're eligible to file a claim if your fridge, made from January 2014 through the end of 2017, is covered. Without proof, you may receive up to $450, and with proof, thousands more. That deadline is January 11th. And did you buy contact lenses online? 1-800-CONTACTS and others, including Walgreens and Vision Direct, settled an antitrust lawsuit. If you bought contacts from them between January 2004 and September of last year, you can file a claim for some cash. We have links to all of those class action lawsuit settlements on our website. If you are eligible, the money is there for the taking, but it's up to you to claim it. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Right, that's 447. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, Mark and Stephanie, things still look great out there. We had a little bit of construction there. It looks like on the axis road of Highway 90 at Leon Creek, but other areas are looking pretty good at this point. Let's take another look at Transguide. Right now, Highway 90 at Nogalitos. Still great out there. No problems in the downtown vicinity. 35 at San Marcos, and uh, we move out to 35 at Schwab Road. Have some flashing lights out there with the construction barrels. I-10 to La Cantera, we also have some, some, some construction, as well as the access road there, Highway 90 at Leon Creek. 10, Daryl, at 1604, you can see everything does clear up so far. No problems there. Thank you, Marcus. Some folks are going to walk outside this morning, and it's going to be like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what open happened? Up, uh -huh. Open up the door to let the dog out. It's like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, it is just wonderful out there and overall it's going to be sticking around this week which is I mean even better kind of the icing on the cake if you will and we did have a lot of clouds hanging around here yesterday uh, that front moved on through we did make it back up to 78 in the afternoon officially here in town and then the moon came up and fall breeze and moonbeams to me it sounds like a Hallmark movie doesn't it yeah. a little bit fall breeze and moonbeams and a pretty this, shot to go with it the story of a young never mind anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And by the way, the moon again is going to be uh, full in a couple of days on Thursday on the 1st, setting us up obviously for that blue moon at the uh, end of the month. Beautiful view on live cam uh, from our camera there around Brook City Base. All the nice uh, distinct twinkling lights of downtown. 47 now in Comfort as well as Ball Verde. 55 in town, 54 Randolph and Hondo. You're at 50, so probably going to be dropping down into the 40s when it's all said and done. And again, we've got all the perfect ingredients, clear skies, very, very dry air, no wind. We don't have the wind like we did yesterday. And so the cooler, heavier air can continue to sink down to the surface. In theory, if the sun waited long enough, we could get down this low. We're not going to, but we'll continue to drop down. I think we're going to be seeing some of the coolest temperatures here in town uh, that we've seen since way back in like the middle to latter part of April, and that's how cool it's going to be around here. The dew point change in the past 24 hours, 34 degrees it has dropped down since this time yesterday morning. We still had all that humidity right before the front moved on through here. And the nice thing about it, too, is dew points are going to continue to drop down. So it, the air is going to get even drier later on this afternoon. And then that's setting us up for another very, very cool morning tomorrow. And then the huge swing in temperatures throughout the day tomorrow, like we're going to be seeing today. Now, the humidity will start to go up a little bit going in toward the weekend, but we're still just getting up to that 
threshold line of where you notice it a bit more. So yes, it won't be as cool and crisp in the mornings. Again, we can't drop down below dew point temperatures, so we'll stay right around maybe low 60s. But again, that's kind of normal temperatures. So it's I mean, there again is nothing to complain about as far as this forecast is concerned. Obviously, nothing is showing up on radar right now. And here is the reason why you look at the satellite picture, and then uh, it's better or easier to see on the water vapor imagery. Big ridge off to the west. Here's the big low around the Great Lakes, and that's what's pumping down that front. Now we start to warm up a little bit as the week progresses, and then we're going to have another little tinge reinforcing air, cooler air coming on in here. So that'll just kind of keep us from getting too warm and hold temperatures in check for the weekend. 76 degrees today at noon. So again, temperatures this morning, especially are just going to be starting to skyrocket once that sun comes up, gets a little bit higher in the sky. Top off at 81 degrees, still well below normal, normal high being up in the uh, upper 80s that obviously no wind advisories anything like that today we don't have anything to uh, deal with uh, other than plenty of sunshine all the way through the rest of the week now i hate to say it obviously downside no rain in the forecast maybe <laughs> the first time first chance for any rain is going to be about maybe the middle part of next week or late next week but oh goodness gracious we are enjoying Just soak that in yeah, exactly. We'll take it. Open up the windows this morning. Yes. Thank you, Mike. 451, 55 degrees. And coming up next in entertainment news, a couple of Game of Thrones co-stars are expecting their first child together. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers. Pick three, eight, four, seven, Fireball nine. Your daily four numbers, three, seven. Three, six, fireball one. Cash five, we have one, 15, 19, 21, 25, and your Texas two step four, 12, 25, 35, 31. Four fifty four, a couple of Game of Thrones celebrities are celebrating their first child and the K-pop superstar band BTS announcing a new album. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Romina Puga. Game of Thrones co-stars and real life couple Kit Harington and Rose Leslie, known for their characters Jon Snow and Egret in the HBO series, are expecting their first child together. The two met and fell in love on set and married in an intimate ceremony in Scotland in 2018. All the magazine people said don't do a lesbian story in the first issue, so I feel like we need to do a lesbian story. Julianne Moore says it was an honor to portray Gloria Steinem in the new movie The Glorias. The film is based on Steinem's memoir and spans eight decades of her life, played on screen by four different actresses. I was really fortunate in that this is this is not a standard biopic. You know, she's represented by four different actors at different stages in her life. And so I didn't have the onus of being the one, you know, the one and only Gloria. So K-pop superstars BTS announced their new album, B, Deluxe Edition, will be released November 20th. It's the follow-up to their record-breaking single, Dynamite, which topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart for two consecutive weeks. The new record is said to contain the most BTS-ish music yet. And happy birthday to basketball star Kevin Durant, who's turning 31. Singer Halsey turning 25 and Jerry Lee Lewis turning 84. That's what's happening in Hollywood. In Los Angeles, I'm Romina Puga for ABC News. Wow, 84 I years know. young. <laughs> Didn't know that. 456, 55 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, the first presidential debate of the 2020 election season almost here. We're going to have a preview of tonight's showdown between President Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Are you ready yet for another streaming device? We'll tell you about Google's new service coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, drive-by shooting on the northeast side. Send at least one person to the hospital overnight. We'll have the details. And coming up, it's the first debate between Joe Biden and President Trump. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with more on what to expect. And taking a look out with a live cam this morning, it is a nice 55 degrees. What a difference. We're going to check in with Mike to see how long this cool weather will last. Yeah, it is Tuesday, September 29th. Good morning to you. Yeah, for many of you, it is definitely a jacket kind of morning out there. Very different. So I can imagine if we hadn't or if someone hadn't been paying attention to the weather and then mm -hmm. they, you know, yesterday morning they got up and then this morning's like, what happened? Oh, it's going to happen. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, just go to, to go to the, go to H E B and watch right? people get out of their cars and, and run right to the store. <laughs> They're gonna yeah. act like it's you know the, Surprise. the frozen tundra, but <laughs> I, it is just wonderful out there. Twenty five degrees cooler this morning than what we were at this time right before that front moved on through here, and the humidity is very very low throughout the rest of today. We're gonna make it up to seventy nine at three o'clock, eighty one for a high temperature today. So huge warm up. We're gonna gain a good you know twenty five in some cases, some areas. 30 or more degrees between the low and the high today. As far as the uh, allergens and the aquifer, the uh, aquifer did drop down just a little bit in the past 24 hours in yesterday's reading. Of course, the uh, average is still well above 660 and a lot of mold out there. That should be going down in the next few days. Ragweed is moderate and fall elm is on the low side. All right, take a look at the water vapor imagery. So not only do we have extremely dry air down here at the surface, but also upstairs in the atmosphere. And what that means is we're going to have those just gorgeous blue skies out there. That really, really intense shade of blue today. So. Just a fantastic day. Open up the windows and enjoy it. Clear, cool, wonderful this morning, this afternoon, sunny, low 80s, fantastic. And tomorrow, very chilly start again. And just another beautiful, beautiful day tomorrow. And the best news is, for the most part, this great weather is going to last all week long and into the weekend. Subtle changes here and there, but still fantastic. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything big going on, sir? Not right now. Things are still pretty quiet out there on the roadways, Mike. And so as we take a other look, folks, a closer look, we're going to go from the map over to Transguide. You can see uh, 281 there at Hildebrand, north and southbound lanes running smoothly. Roads are dry right now, so that's great news. And then I-10 at 1604, hardly anyone out there on the east or the westbound lanes. Moving over to I-10 La Cantera, you can see they still have the construction barrels up, but hopefully in a little bit they'll be picking those up and opening up those additional lanes. And Highway 90, Leon Creek, no uh, construction on the main lanes, but we do have construction there on the access road. No problems. 35 at Schwab Road. Mark and Stephanie. Thanks, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to find two to three suspects. They say were involved in a drive by shooting that sent at least one person to the hospital. Happened just after 11 last night on Pleasant Bay on the northeast side near Woodlake Hills Middle School. SAPD says two men and one woman were staying in front of a garage when two to three people pulled up in a black vehicle and started shooting. One person was hit in the leg and taken to the hospital in stable condition. SAPD says the suspects used two different kinds of guns during the shooting. In just hours from now, President Donald Trump and Joe Biden will go head to head on the debate stage in Cleveland, Ohio. You can watch the debate tonight starting at 8 right here on KSET 12. Uh, from a new Supreme Court justice nomination to the pandemic, the two will challenge each other live for the first time. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in Washington with a preview of what we can all expect. This morning, final preparations are underway for the first presidential debate, and it will be unlike any other in modern American history. Joe Biden and President Trump will not shake hands. There will be no opening statements and very few in the crowd. Biden says he's prepared for the gloves to come off. He's going to want to make it personal. He's going to want to get in the mosh pit. I'm going to talk about why I want to be president of the United States. The candidates approach about as different as the candidates themselves. Biden taking time off the trail to get ready. But Trump rolling with his rallies, taking his message right to his supporters. How many hours would you say you've spent on oh, debate? Well, I mean, it's a little time. I mean, not a lot. More or less than 16. I'm running a country. I'm, I don't, you know, I don't have the luxury. Trump and Biden are coming face to face for the first time this campaign, while the presidential race is tightening in some key battleground states. A new ABC News Washington Post poll shows Biden getting a big boost from women in Pennsylvania. Mr. Trump is using his Supreme Court pick to energize his base. Biden says health care is at stake, with the court said to decide the fate of Obamacare just one week after the election. This is about whether or not pre-existing conditions will be continued to be covered. And on the eve of this presidential showdown, the American public is getting what's been described as its first detailed look at one of Donald Trump's most closely guarded secrets, his tax returns. In a blockbuster report, the New York Times reviewed detailed information on nearly two decades worth of Trump tax returns. The revelations are startling. Trump paid no federal income taxes at all in 11 of the 18 years they reviewed. The Times also reports the president is hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. 
The president has repeatedly said that his tax returns are under IRS audit and tweeted that he has very little debt compared to the value of his assets. As for tonight's debate, moderator Chris Wallace will give the first question to President Trump. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. And one man is in custody after deputies say he barricaded himself in a home where another man was killed. Bear County deputies were called to the home in the 25,000 block of Whistling Acres, just north of TPC Parkway yesterday. That's after neighbors said they found a man in his 40s dead inside of that home. When deputies got there, they figured out the victim had been dead for some time with multiple stab wounds to his upper body. They also found another man in the house who was armed. They were talking to him for some time. They were able to determine that at this point, it seems like he's uh, got some mental health issues, uh, but they were able to negotiate with him, get him to at some point throw what we believe to be the murder weapon out of the house, uh, and they were able to get him to come out peacefully and give up. At this time, the names of the suspect and victim have not been released, but Sheriff Javier Salazar says the two men are related. The trial of an accused cop killer, Otis McCain, set to resume next month. The 31-year-old accused of shooting veteran SAP detective Benjamin Marconi as he sat in his patrol car back in 2017. McCain charged with capital murder, and the DA announced they would seek the death penalty. Jury selection will resume October 26, but testimony isn't expected until next year. That trial was put on hold in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This week, Northside ISD parents are having to choose between in-person and virtual learning for their kids. Parents and guardians must notify the district whether their child will do in-person or virtual learning through a survey by midnight tomorrow. The second quarter of school begins on October 19th. The district says more than 11,000 students are doing in-person learning. Some parents are worried, though, while others are praising the school staff for their efforts. I'm high risk. I am not in a position to be around people who may have COVID symptoms. And so my job has allowed me to work from home. Um, and I, it's, it's worked out really well for us that I'm able to be here to help him. Um, but we're just, we're just not ready. I think the district's done a great job of putting protocols in place to make parents feel safe about the environment they're returning their kids to. Northside ISD officials say during the first quarter of school, 10 students were allowed per classroom going into the second nine weeks, so it will be dependent on San Antonio's health metrics. 507, 55 degrees. Still had one of the oldest games on Facebook, Farmville. It's officially shutting down. And are you feeling a little stressed about this year's election? Well, up next, we have some things you can do that may help you feel a little less anxious. And taking a look out with live cam, it is 55 degrees. If you have a, a sweater you've been wanting to wear for a long time, today is the day. Although you might need to lose it in the afternoon. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. With the 2020 election less than two months away, many people feel maybe feeling what mental health experts are calling election stress. RJ Marcus has some helpful ways you can deal with the added tension. Mental health experts with Healthline say people are feeling especially stressed about this year's presidential election. The 2020 election is like no other. According to Choosing Therapy, a professional counseling service, more than half of adults in the United States feel elections are a source for high stress. Licensed therapist says any kind of stress and anxiety can create poor health. Because this election feels so significant, stress levels are higher in adults. Not only can stress affect a person's mental health, it can also produce physical illnesses. Experts say chronic stress and anxiety Anxiety can trigger tension headaches, stomach aches, insomnia, and elevated blood pressure. Also, talking to others about your feelings is a great way to cope. They say as you share the tensions and negative emotions you're feeling, it's important to also focus on the positives. Unplugging from social media can also help if you're feeling overwhelmed. Limiting your exposure can help you reconnect with peaceful thoughts. Just remember, you're not alone. It's okay to seek help. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 512 and a beautiful 55 degrees. Coming up on GMSA, details on a brand new streaming device set to be launched by Google tomorrow. And also next, how Microsoft is working to correct a major outage with its Microsoft 365 program, which is affecting access to several services, including Outlook. I wanted more from my COPD medicine. That's why I've got the power of one, two, three medicines with Trelegy. The only FDA approved once daily three in one COPD treatment. Trelegy, the power of one, two, three, Trelegy. 
With Trelogy and the power of one, two, three, I'm breathing better. Trelogy works three ways to open airways, keep them open, and reduce inflammation for 24 hours of better breathing. Trelogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trelogy is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trelogy more than prescribed. Trelogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Think your COPD medicine is doing enough? Maybe you should think again. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trelogy. We know times are hard, and we're here for you. Find support at Trelogy.com. 515 Microsoft dealing with a big problem. They're trying to get Microsoft 365 back up and fully working. The outage caused millions of people to lose services. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Microsoft's major outage. The company says it's resolved an incident which blocked many users from several Microsoft 365 services, including Outlook email. The government's cybersecurity unit says the outage was not part of a coordinated campaign. Google will officially unveil its new streaming device at an event tomorrow, but reports say Chromecast is already being sold at some retailers, including Walmart and Home Depot. The device features a new oval design and a remote. It's selling for about $50. Finally, the original Farmville on Facebook is shutting down. It launched in 2009, and at the height of its popularity, about 30 million people were playing each day. Current players can continue tending to their crops and everything else until the game shuts down on New Year's Eve. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Well, this morning, the weather is so beautiful. You could probably drive around with the windows down a little bit. Yeah, it would be the time to do that. And uh, traffic looking okay right now, right, Marcus? Right now, no problems out there. So as we take a look, a uh, map showing signs that uh, we have no slowdowns. Let's move over to TransGuy. We saw some activity on uh, lo different locations where some of that construction was taking place. 35 at San Monaco so far, no problems there. All the way 35 at Schwab Road. Let's move over here. 35 at Evans, north and south on lane. Starting to pick up in volume ever so slightly. In 410 at Crossroads, you see just a handful of vehicles there. Highway 90 at Nogalito so far. No problems. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Mike, this is one of those mornings you predicted that uh, parts of the Hill Country might see temperatures dip into the 40s. Already in the 40s and even wow. just on the fringes of Bear County as well. We're down in the 40s right now. Yesterday, of course, uh, we were only in the upper 70s in the afternoon and we had that front move on through and, you know, we had a lot of clouds left over and it made for some beautiful pictures, kind of like this one, as Mr. Childers always likes to describe God's handiwork. Yes, indeed. It just looked like a fall day. It felt like a fall day and it feels like a fall morning. I'll tell you that. And it's just gorgeous out there. We are going to have a spectacular sunrise this morning with this dry air in place. So yesterday we made it up to 80 degrees. But if you remember, that was right about this time yesterday or just about to say four o'clock in the morning. And that was right as the front was moving on through and temperatures started to uh, drop down considerably after that. But in the afternoon, then we rebounded. We made it down in the 60s, rebounded up into the uh, upper 70s yesterday. And we are looking at low 80s again today, maybe a couple of mid 80s around the area. Huge warm up. Obviously, we're in the mid 50s right now, and we're going to gain a good 25, in some cases, 30 degrees, and maybe even more so tomorrow. So, again, we've got the huge roller coaster action, which you can see very well in the water vapor imagery. And there's that high out to the west of us, the big low around the Great Lakes, and we are right in the middle and get this flow out of the uh, northwest. And there's this one little batch of extremely dry air aloft, and uh, we're going to have just gorgeous weather today all day long. Picture perfect. Again, roll down the windows light jacket this morning, but you won't need to buy it later on this afternoon. That's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. So once again, there's the high off to the west. Here's the big roller coaster action that north to northwesterly flow aloft in the atmosphere pulling down the cooler air that remains in place basically throughout the rest of the week. We won't be quite as chilly after tomorrow morning, I'm still down in the 50s, but the two coldest mornings look like it's going to be this morning as well as tomorrow morning. And then going into the weekend, things start to flatten out just a little bit. I mean, we will start to peak, I think, on Thursday, get a tiny bit of a reinforcing shot just to hold temperatures in check. But slightly more humidity is going to keep uh, low temperatures up somewhat. Then we really start to flatten out going into the first part of next week. And so temperatures may go up a little bit more. What's 
going to be interesting and we'll have to keep tabs on this as far as rain chances because between now and about this time next week, nothing as far as any rain chances. There is a little bit of hope and again, still a long way off that we get somewhat of a disturbance trying to come in here from the uh, Gulf of Mexico to meet up with another front perhaps by Thursday of next week. So we're looking at what is that the 8th through 9th, 10th of the month going into the next weekend. But as of right now, I mean, that's sheer speculation. Just a hope that we get some rain by the latter half of next week. 76 degrees, can't have rain, might as well have perfect weather, and that's basically what's in store today. Sunny skies at noon, high temperature today up to 81. Normal high is in the upper 80s, so well below that. And tomorrow we start off another very chilly morning down in the uh, low 50s, and we are going to be oh, getting up into the well, kind of low 60s. Whoops, let me back up there, going into the low 60s. Kind of jumped ahead of myself. We'll take this picture. Uh, high temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s, close to 90 by Thursday, and then we'll sort of be uh, getting a reality check and keeping us in the mid 80s by the weekend. Darn remote. It's hard to U-turn sometimes, <laughs> isn't it? I know. And then to go backwards. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We'll mm. Uh, look at the beautiful picture. It will remind us of the beautiful weather. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And no clouds today, like in this picture. Very All right. Good. Fantastic. Thank you, Mike. 521, 55 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, James Cameron gives an update on not one, but two sequels to his hit movie, Avatar. Here are all your lottery numbers. Once again, pick three, eight, four, seven, Fireball, nine, daily four, three, seven, three, six, Fireball, one. And your cash five, one, 15, 19, 21, 25. Your Texas two step, four, 12, 25, 35, bonus ball, 31. All right now, it's time to take a look at the latest stories making headlines in the world of entertainment. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. You are not in Kansas anymore. You are on Pandora. James Cameron says shooting is now complete on Avatar 2 and nearly finished on Avatar 3. The Oscar-winning director broke the news in an interview with old pal Arnold Schwarzenegger and admits they're lucky to be filming the sequels in New Zealand, where COVID cases are close to zero. We're able to operate, we're able to shoot, and we're able to have a more or less normal life here. So we were very fortunate. So I don't see any roadblocks to us getting the picture finished. The pandemic forced Disney to push both movies back a year. Avatar 2 is now set for release in 2022, with Avatar 3 hitting screens in 2024. A new Billie Eilish documentary will arrive in theaters and on Apple TV Plus in February. Billie Eilish, The World's a Little Blurry, gives a behind the scenes look at the singer's life after the release of her blockbuster debut disc, which won a Grammy for Album of the Year. It's a baby boy for Joaquin Phoenix and Rooney Mara. The newly engaged couple reportedly named their bundle of joy River after Joaquin's late brother, actor River Phoenix. It's the couple's first child together. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Even their kid after River. <laughs> yeah, that is neat. I-26, 55 degrees. And also ahead in our next half hour, as some schools and businesses focus on how to reopen safely, President Donald Trump is announcing a plan for rapid COVID-19 testing. It's National Coffee Day. That means some awesome deals out there for you. We'll tell you which companies are offering free coffee and discounts. And elderly people are missing their family and friends more than ever right now. And if your loved ones are persistent on you visiting, we have some things you need to know before making that trip. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, the 29th of September. Thanks for joining us. We are excited because it actually feels like fall this morning at 55 degrees. Mike calls this sweater weather. And when's the last time you were able to say that? Last, uh, what, April? Wow. You know, I mean, yeah. Basically, and we're looking at some of the coolest temperatures since way back last spring. It is just absolutely wonderful out there this morning. Clear skies and look at some of these temperatures. 
46 right now in Fredericksburg. Kerrville at 49, 55 out there at the airport. And Rock Springs is at 54 degrees. Just wonderful. Open up the windows. And we're going to have a huge warm up throughout the day, especially uh, once the sun comes up between um, sunrise, just about 7 30, 8 o'clock, and noon. We'll gain a good 20 degrees or so and then continue up to 81 later on today. Low humidity. Fantastic out there, clear skies, and then another very chilly morning tomorrow. It's still be going to be cool uh, on Thursday morning, and low temperatures won't be quite as low. Still nice, even going into the weekend, and just fantastic weather all the way through the rest of the week and going into the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo. You haven't had much to uh, talk about this morning. So far, it's been quiet, Mike. Hopefully, it stays that way for those folks that uh, haven't ventured out quite yet. We still have a number of folks uh, either at home getting ready to head to work or those working the overnight shift waiting to go home. 37 Indian Hills so far, no problems there for the north or south on lanes at 37. Moving on to 37 in Carolina, you can see a little smudge there to the camera, but I think that's just left over from yesterday. We have nothing there on the roads there, 1604 at Hausman. A few vehicles out there. Just remember, buckle up and watch that speed once you head out this morning. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. A man who San Antonio police say had a target on his back is now nursing a gunshot wound to his leg. He was shot outside a northeast side home on a street called Pleasant Bay, not far from Gibbs Sprawl Road. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters where police are trying to figure out who shot him. But Katrina, you say police believe the shooter definitely targeted this victim. That's right. They say that witnesses told them that the shooter called the victim by name before pulling the trigger. The police say this victim was one of three people standing outside a home on Pleasant Bay after 11 last night. Witnesses told them a black sedan pulled up with two or three people inside. Someone called out to the victim, then started shooting. Investigators say they found shell casings from two different guns at the scene. They also found bullet holes in the front of the home, as well as two parked cars. The man who was shot was taken to a hospital Again, a gunshot wound in his leg, and police say that he should be okay. They're still looking for the shooter. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. Coronavirus has dominated 2020, changing everyday life for hundreds of millions of people across the globe. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, although work on a potential vaccine is underway, health officials say the pandemic still poses a serious threat. There are more than 1 million confirmed COVID-19 deaths worldwide, according to Johns Hopkins University. I didn't get to say goodbye to my mom or my dad now, and that's what hurts me the most right now. It took about eight months to reach this somber milestone. One of the biggest challenges we have is that some people just don't believe that this is a serious disease, even to this day. Although COVID-19 has affected much of the globe, the United States has the most recorded deaths with more than 205,000. That includes 28-year-old Dr. Adeline Fagan of Houston, who lost her battle with the virus earlier this month. Adeline passed away because of COVID. This isn't a hoax, and if you can do something as simple as wearing a mask, everyone is being affected by this. As some U.S. schools and businesses focus on how to reopen safely, President Trump announced a plan to soon distribute 150 million rapid COVID-19 tests. These new Abbott rapid point of care tests are easy to use and return results within just minutes. You'll have a, a result at a maximum 15 minutes. While more testing is being done in the U.S., some medical experts say the president's plan is not enough to get control of the pandemic. We need a lot more if we want to be able to test schools, uh, colleges, uh, workplaces. So I see this as a step forward, but not where we need to be. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Here at home, coronavirus has led to more contactless curbside services. Right now, HB is temporarily offering free curbside pickup and free delivery for groceries. The promotion is helping waive fees for those services through October 6th at participating stores. We have an article online with all the information you need. It's on our homepage at ksat.com. In your morning headlines, one of the nation's largest health care providers has been hit by a nationwide cyber attack. Universal Health Services says an IT security issue forced its computer network offline. When they detected it, they took down all of their information systems, including those dealing with patient data. Universal Health Services operates 26 acute care hospitals across the world, along with 328 behavioral health facilities and 42 outpatient facilities. The company said in a statement, 
none of its patients or employees information quote appears to have been accessed copied or misused end quote they are working to bring the network completely back online stocks will try to continue a positive trend today after spending all day in positive territory monday all major indices were able to gain ground investors still appear optimistic congress will agree on a new stimulus deal even though economists are signaling pessimism about an agreement in the near future. Some analysts also think the buying is fueled by investors picking up more stocks at the end of a bad month. If you're planning a trip to the nation's capital, the National Park Service says the Washington Monument will reopen to visitors starting October 1st. It's been closed for six months. The Park Service says visitors will have to get their tickets online and wear a face mask while inside. The monument will have limited elevator capacity. Visitors will also have to follow an observation deck time limit and use extra sanitation procedures. 535, 55 degrees. The decision to visit your older relatives can be tough right now since you want to see them, but still keep them healthy. We have what you need to know before you visit. The next airlines saying 100,000 good paying jobs could be lost this week if Congress does not step in to help. And taking a look out with live cam. Yay, it's 55 degrees. It's time to wear your sweater. It's going to warm up, but you know, overall this week is looking really nice. We're going to check in with Mike for the full details. We'll be right back. Despite a recent uptick in air travel, the number of people traveling by plane is down 70% from last year. That's according to the group Airlines for America. And as CNN's Mandy Gaither explains, this week things could get even worse for the industry. When the federal government bailed out the airline industry earlier this year, it barred layoffs and voluntary furloughs and pay cuts for employees. But those restrictions expire October 1st. This clock has been ticking all summer long. Airlines for America CEO Nick Calio says if airlines don't get more money, it'll not only be detrimental for airline employees, but will also hurt passengers. There's going to be significant reductions in service. You've already seen a lot of that, but it doesn't affect just small communities, it's small, medium and large sized communities. Harder to get flights, harder to go. CEOs and union leaders joined together last week to plead with Congress for another $28 billion in federal help for the airline industry, saying that 100,000 good paying airline jobs will be lost this week, including 19,000 furloughs from American Airlines. I just can't believe that we, name, we may not be able to do the right thing simply because our elected officials can't come to any sort of compromise agreement. We're better than that. Airline officials insist that last minute help from Congress could still keep those job cuts from taking place. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. And time now is 540 and 55 degrees. It is National Coffee Day. We'll tell you where and how you can snag a free cup of joe today coming up on GMSA. Five forty-three. Welcome back and good morning to you. While staying home is the best way to stop the spread of coronavirus, we know isolation can be tough, especially for older relatives. But if your heart is set on seeing them, there are ways to do that safely. RJ Marcus has five suggestions for a safe visit. Elderly people are missing their family and friends more than normal right now because of the pandemic. If your loved ones are persistent on you visiting, here are some things to consider before making the trip. First, consider the risk. The most vulnerable people should continue to stay home if they can. That includes those over the age of 60 and people with chronic illnesses. They are more likely to become severely ill if they get coronavirus. Next, talk about it. Discuss why you want to visit and acknowledge the risk involved. Have you been staying home and limiting your exposure? Or have you had to work in environments that could expose them to the virus? Visit virtually. Third, follow your safety protocols. Make sure you're not sick when you plan to visit whether you have a runny nose, fever, or stomach ache. Always wear a mask, social distance, and greet without touching them. Also, pace yourself when you're visiting. Start off with a few people or just one at a time. The more people who visit, the greater chance of exposure. Finally, meet outside. Places like a park or garden are best so you can safely distance from others. Transmission is unlikely outside as long as you're staying six feet apart. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News.
In your morning consumer headlines, today is officially National Coffee Day and coffee shops near you are ready to celebrate. Duncan is giving out a free iced or cold coffee with a purchase today and offering a chance to win a care package. Starbucks has five days of freebies in store for its rewards members. Check with your local favorite coffee spot for those options. And fun fact, Brazil is the world's top coffee producer right now while more than 50 countries grow the beans. Universal Orlando have a new ride next year. The company's Florida theme parks announced a new roller coaster called the Velocicoaster. The ride will be a part of Universal Orlando's Jurassic World attractions. Of course, it features the film franchise's trademark Velociraptors. The coaster will feature two launches and a 360 degree barrel roll. It's when the track rotates 180 degrees, putting riders upside down. The tallest hill, 155 feet tall. Oh my goodness, that's scary. Would you do that? Heck yeah. <laughs> Why short? <laughs> just like my husband. I mean, I'm, I'm there next to him. Just like, oh, oh. we could talk you into it, Steph. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll go, but I'll, mm -hmm. but I'll be scared the whole way. It'll be okay. That's what duct tape's for. Let's check traffic <laughs> right now at 545. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape. <laughs> For, I just want her to enjoy her experience. <laughs> to hold her in so, the seat? Yes, <laughs> exactly. of course. Yeah, not, okay. not to keep me from screaming. <laughs> right. <laughs> we got to talk, Mark. Okay. No right, right now, as we take a look. I know what you were saying. <laughs> right now, as we take a look, uh, different areas looking pretty good there. It's your trans guy, 21 Hildebrand, no problems. 37 at Hackberry. No loop-de-loops and no quarter barrel turns there. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. 37 at Military, no problems. Let's move down here. 35 at Evans. Up on the northeast side, starting to see slight increases in the traffic, but yeah, roller coasters are fun. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Mike is here now, and for folks just now waking up, do you want to go ahead and break the news, Mike? That it's absolutely wonderful outside? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, oh gosh, open up the windows, and you know, it, it's nice when you can kind of air out the house a little bit yeah. like this. You know, we don't have the, the wind from yesterday. Hopefully, your decorations and your garbage can. You yeah. fetch that off the, down the street, but uh, it's it's beautiful out there. And whoops, hi, I'm still here. I thought I was over there. I'll stay here. Stay by the beautiful moon. Stay by the beautiful moon. Yeah, I was able to capture the moon in between some of the clouds last night. It is almost full. It's going to be full on Thursday on the first, and that means the next full moon, of course, is going to be on the 31st, the blue moons, beautiful out there. And look at the dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. At this time yesterday, we were still in the mid 70s, starting off right before that front moved on through here. So with this dry air, not only is it so comfortable out there, but of course that allows temperatures to really drop down because dry air doesn't hold the heat in as well as moist air does, but then on the flip side, it heats up a lot more easily. And so that's why we're gonna be seeing temperatures go up 25, 30 degrees, uh, even more than that in some cases today, as well as tomorrow, because of all this dry air in place. And over the next couple of days, the humidity will start to come back up. But I mean, we're still below 60, and that's where it's really comfortable. Now, even on the weekend, it's gonna be just a little bit more humid. Uh, not really anything, not like what we had yesterday morning or this past weekend. Also, but what that's going to be doing is progressively holding temperatures up a little bit, low temperatures. So um, we'll still be very chilly tomorrow morning, but then by the weekend, we're going to be staying upper 50s, low 60s around here. Still um, a little bit below normal as far as low temperatures are concerned. Satellite picture. Obviously, there's nothing going on, and you can kind of see the last of those clouds that got on out of here. This very faint shade of gray getting pushed down through and that's it. We are not going to really see a cloud until maybe in toward uh, Thursday, Friday, one or two of them mixed in and over the weekend. That'll pretty much be about it. There is the front, which is moving through the eastern portion of the country and behind it, the nice cool air. And you can see it very well on the uh, water vapor imagery. There's the ridge off to the west and the trough around the Great Lakes area. That's what is helping get the combination of these two. And we are right in the middle of it. And that's what pulls down the beautiful air around here. And that's going to be the situation uh, throughout the next couple of days. Temperatures will start to go up somewhat as we go into uh, Thursday, especially. So normal high is right around mid upper 80s. We're going to probably top off a little bit warmer than that. And then going into Friday and Saturday, we get kind of a little extra nudge just to hold temperatures and keep them down into the mid 80s going into uh, the weekend and beautiful weather going in through even the first part of next week. Downside is 
We don't have anything as far as any rain between now and about this time next week. However, going into the mid latter part of next week, there is some hope that we get a little bit of a uh, something coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico that would give us some rain chances. But again, not until as it looks right now, the latter part of next week, 76 degrees today at noon, sunny skies. Oh, just beautiful today. Just uh, go outside and take a nice big deep breath. 81 for a high temperature. Again, plenty of sunshine. Next few days, enjoy. Cool mornings, warm afternoons. Make sure the kid's name is in their jacket just if they head off to school or the sweatshirt because you won't need it in the afternoon. And then going in toward the weekend, low temperatures will stay right around low 60s. Still a little bit below normal. It's not as crisp as what it is right now. Uh, it seems like we've been waiting forever to see these kinds of temperatures and it's yeah. it's amazing they're here. And unlike the last front, which didn't last that long, right. this one, I mean, the great weather lasts all week long. What a treat. Yeah, good nice. news. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Right now we're at 550, 55 degrees. And the romantic comedy then came you, starring Kathy Lee Gifford and Craig Ferguson. is out this week on digital and on demand. We're going to have a preview next. How about some lottery numbers? Pick three numbers, 847, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 3736, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 1, 15, 19, 21, 25. And your Texas two step, 4, 12, 25, 35, bonus ball, 31. Twenty countries of your twenty favorite movies. It's fascinating. I'm just all about new everything's these days. Can you then came you stars today's show host Kathy Lee Gifford as a lonely widow who sets out with her husband's ashes to visit the locations of their favorite movies. During her first stop, she meets a Scottish innkeeper who changes her life forever. Let's get drunk. Sometimes you're very cute. You're good looking as well. Wow. As well as me, I'm still good looking. <laughs> the movie's an old fashioned wisecracking romantic comedy. It feels like, you know, the, these old 40s and 50s wisecracking movies. I'm as surprised as anyone this movie is as good as it is. Usually if I'm in something, it's not that good. But for some reason, this one is. The romantic comedy was also written and co-produced by Gifford, who says she created the story with Craig Ferguson in mind. He spent a week with me on the Today Show hosting, and we decided to write uh, this movie, and, and, and it came about, and I wrote it specifically tailored for Craig's gifts because I think he's one of the best talents in, in, in the entire industry. And I think what's going to surprise a lot of people is what a great dr dramatic actor he is. Gifford is a widow herself. Her husband, former pro football player and broadcaster Frank Gifford, died in 2015. She feels Then Came You will appeal to an audience that most romantic films fail to reach out to. Of the American adult women, I think it's 49% of them are alone. They live alone. They're either single or they're divorced or they're widowed. That's a huge demographic out there that Hollywood has been ignoring. What you have to do is to learn how to be happy again. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Proton pump inhibitors like these over-the-counter drugs help reduce acid production in the stomach. But a new study by researchers at Ohio State University finds the chronic use of PPIs could be causing memory problems. The researchers studied breast cancer patients in three clinical trials. They noted their prescription and over-the-counter medication, then reported any concentration or memory problems. Researchers say the memory problems were between 20 and 29 percent more severe than those reported by patients who didn't use PPIs. The original clinical trials that showed that these were safe drugs to consume were very short term in nature. They were um, like typically less than six months. I think it warrants some caution in, you know, using proton pump inhibitors, especially um, among a population that's already at risk for gastrointestinal issues and potential cognitive decline. Madison says it's not clear whether the memory loss in cancer patients is temporary or it would resolve itself at the end of treatment. It's an area that needs additional study. And there was a hint of this earlier this year in a study of the general population. It showed an association with the chronic use of PPIs along with a higher incidence of dementia in men and women over the age of 75. 
Chronic use of PPIs is considered a three-month prescription over the course of an 18-month period. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. If you haven't registered to vote, the clock is ticking. The deadline to register is Monday, October 5th. Early voting runs Monday, October 13th through Friday, October 30th. The general election, Tuesday, November 3rd. Find out how to register or check your status right now at our website, KSAT.com. You can also take a look at who's on the ballot here in Bear County. It's on our vote section under the news tab. So glad you're with us on this Tuesday morning. Still ahead on GMSA, juggling a job search and being a full-time parent with kids from home can be tough combination, but we'll run down some easy ways to make the whole process run a little bit more smoothly. Speaking of, how are the roads looking? Let's go outside with Transguide 37 at Carolina. Marcus will have an update and uh, we'll talk more about those unbelievably cool morning temperatures we're experiencing right now. One person is in the hospital after a drive-by shooting on the northeast side. We're going to hear what led up to that incident that left a victim with a bullet wound. And outside with live cam, as advertised, cooler temperatures have settled in over South Texas. If you're in the house, it may be time to open the windows up. If you're headed to the car, you're going to want to put those windows down. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now and good morning to you it is tuesday it is september 29th and it's feeling every bit of late september out there yes thank you for starting your morning with us and it's finally time to pull out those sweaters or light jackets for now yeah especially out in the texas hill country mike was telling us yesterday morning that we could see temperatures on a tuesday starting the day in the 40s and it is happening as we speak as he takes a jog around our cameras here in the studio and appears Hello, hello. Hi. I had the wrong show popped up in my uh, computer, but yeah, it is. Uh, we are seeing 40s out in portions of the Hill Country right now. Just absolutely fantastic out there. Best advice, just open up the windows and enjoy it. Yes, we, and, and get kind of chilly. From just it. fun to talk about, too. It, it, it yeah. is, and it's great that the heat nor the air conditioning were on yesterday, which is nice, too, for your uh, uh, electric bill. So there we have 45 right now in Comfort, 46 Kerrville, Bulverde at 46 degrees, 55 here in town, and Hondo has now dropped down to 47 degrees, and we'll probably drop down in some places even a couple of more notches in the next uh, few hours. I'm going for 52, maybe kind of pushing it, but uh, it's definitely uh, chilly out there, and like I said, with the dry air and clear skies, we can drop down a little bit more, and then we're going to see a huge warm up, especially say between eight and uh, eight and noon and gain about 20, in some cases, almost 25 degrees. Then we continue from there and we'll make it up to 81 later on today. Lots of sunshine, absolutely beautiful out there. About the same high temperatures yesterday. Now afternoon, we only got up to 78 because of that cloud cover. This is still though uh, well below normal. We have some more beautiful weather. That's the best news is this great weather is going to be lasting. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. We love all of our folks in blue, especially this guy, well, thank Officer you. Trujillo. And so far, no issues, but with the cooler weather, great time to remind folks, time to check your vehicle out. Make sure you check that air pressure in your tire. Probably a little dark this morning, so wait for this afternoon. Check the air pressure. Also, check those wiper blades, your uh, fan belts, and uh, just make sure all the fluids are topped off in your vehicle. Right now, as we take a look at the uh, roadways, so far, no problems out there. 35 at Evans, north and south on lanes. Definitely starting to pick up in volume. The great news is, so far, no delays in anyone's travel times this morning. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, one person is in the hospital after a drive-by shooting on the northeast side. San Antonio police say it happened in the 6700 block of Pleasant Bay. That's near Seguin and Walsham Roads, not far from Woodlake Hills Middle School. Police say two men and a woman were standing outside when a black sedan pulled up. They say someone inside the car yelled out a name and then people inside that car started shooting. One of them was hit in the leg and taken to Bamsey. The shooters sped off and police are still looking for them. Church police arrested two people after an officer raided a home and found drugs and guns. 24-year-old Gage Sandor and 27-year-old Connor Ross were both booked into the Guadalupe County Jail. Investigators say along with marijuana, methamphetamines and cocaine, there were also mushrooms being grown. Six firearms and more than $1,200 cash were also seized at that home on Crimson Cove on Friday. 
And just a few minutes ago, the results of the latest Bear Facts case at San Antonio report poll were released. Latest poll asked voters how they would vote if the election were held today. And the first question was about the presidential election now five weeks away. According to the poll, more people in Bear County would vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Results show 35% favor President Donald Trump and Vice President Pence and 1% leaning toward voting the Republican Party. Now, meanwhile, 52% are voting for Biden and Harris and 2% have a Democratic leaning. 3% chose other and 10% say they do not know. These are results for the statewide race for U.S. Senator. Currently, the challenger M.J. Hagar polling at 49% in Bear County and 2% lean towards voting for Hagar. 38% of voters polled said they would vote for the incumbent Senator John Cornyn and 1% lead towards voting for Cornyn. 13% of voters polled do not know who they will be voting for. Here locally, we have the latest polling results on the Bear County Sheriff race. 55% of voters polled say they are voting for current Sheriff Javier Salazar and 4% lean toward Salazar. Meanwhile, 27% say they are voting for Gerard Rickoff and 2% lean toward him. 14% of voters polled say they do not know who they are voting for. And right now on KSET.com, you can explore all the results from our latest Bear Facts KSET San Antonio report poll. And in our next half hour, we will go over the results on the proposals for voters in the city of San Antonio. Well, the first presidential debate between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden is tonight. You can watch it right here on KSAT.com. Uh, Stream it on our evening, uh, KSAT streaming app. It starts at 8 this evening in Cleveland, Ohio. Fox News anchor Chris Wallace will moderate the debate. A debate will focus on a number of topics, including the pandemic, Supreme Court, and the protests over racism in the country. We'll have a debate preview coming up this morning at 630. A federal judge is blocking straight ticket voting in Texas for now. The judge put a temporary hold on a lower court's ruling that allowed straight ticket voting in the November election. The U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals is reviewing the case and allowing the two sides to give their arguments. The judge set a quick deadline for the parties to submit their arguments because early voting begins October 13th in Texas. Straight ticket voting was supposed to end this year in Texas after a state law passed in 2017, but a judge, judge ordered the state to continue the practice to help speed up the voting process during a pandemic. This week, Northside ISD parents will choose between in-person or virtual learning for their children. Parents and guardians need to fill out a survey by midnight tomorrow saying if their child will continue to learn remotely or go back to the classroom. The survey comes before the second quarter of the school year on October 19th. The district says more than 11,000 students are currently in the classroom. Some parents are worried while some are praising the school's staffs for their efforts. I'm high risk. I am not in a position to be around people who may have COVID symptoms. And so my job has allowed me to work from home. Um, and I, it's, it's worked out really well for us that I'm able to be here to help him. Um, but we're just, we're just not ready. I think the district's done a great job of putting protocols in place to make parents feel safe about the environment they're returning their kids to. Northside ISD says 10 students are allowed in each classroom right now, and the district will follow San Antonio health metrics to determine if class sizes could expand. Local health officials are reporting 63 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and no new deaths. That drops the seven-day average to 139 cases per day. Mayor Ron Nierenberg says the risk level is now low with a positivity rate of 5.9%. He says the goal is to have a positivity rate of 5% or lower to reopen schools at greater capacity. Worldwide, more than a million people have died from COVID-19. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. The first death reported in Wuhan, China back in January. To put it into perspective, more people have died than live in the city of Austin. It's also four times the number of people who died in the tsunami in the Indian Ocean back in 2004. The CDC is issuing guidelines to protect yourself and your family during Thanksgiving this year. The CDC says the best thing to do this year is stay home and instead of gathering around the table, connect with friends and family virtually. The CDC also has suggestions for Black Friday. They say people should avoid going shopping at crowded stores and participating in the race for deals. They also say you should stay away from parades. Overnight, there was a major development in the Breonna Taylor case after a grand jury filed a lawsuit, a ran, a rather a grand juror filed a lawsuit. 
Kentucky's Attorney General has now agreed to make the grand jury transcripts public. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has more. This morning, after nearly a week of outrage over the grand jury decision not to file murder charges in the Breonna Taylor case, release the transcript. A judge has ruled the hearing transcripts will be entered into the court record and made available to the public. The decision coming after one grand juror filed a lawsuit to release the transcripts. An attorney for the juror claiming the closed door proceedings were of compelling public interest. Overnight, Kentucky's Attorney General Daniel Cameron condemning the move, releasing a statement claiming our team has an ethical obligation not to release the recording from the grand jury proceedings. Adding, we stand by our belief that such a release could compromise the ongoing federal investigation and could have unintended consequences such as poisoning the jury pool. Taylor's family has accused Cameron of slowing down the case since the beginning. I never had faith in Daniel Cameron to begin with. I knew he had already chosen to be on the wrong side of the law. Mm. The moment he wanted to, the grand jury to make the decision. On Monday, Hankinson pleaded not guilty to wanton endangerment for firing into a neighboring apartment. The only charges to come out of the grand jury indictment. The grand juror who filed the lawsuit wants to remain anonymous and says they felt compelled to act in a manner that promotes transparency. The transcripts are due to be released on Wednesday. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says it has finished its investigation of the deadly shooting of Rayshard Brooks, but they say the case file is not available for release at this time. A former Atlanta police officer shot and killed Brooks back in June as Brooks was running from the officer. Police were called to the scene because Brooks' vehicle was parked in the drive through lane of a Wendy's restaurant and he was asleep at the wheel. The officer who shot Brooks is facing murder charges. Another officer is facing charges of aggravated assault and violating his oath of office. Real quick programming note, we want to remind you, ABC is also carrying the presidential debate live during primetime here on KSAT 12. That's happening at 8 p.m. And time now is 610 and 55 degrees. If you have a problem with your outlook yesterday, you're not alone. We'll learn what caused the outage and we'll tell you if everything's been resolved. And tonight again in the first presidential debate, but we have been following the presidential race for more than a year now. After the break, we're going to learn about ways to cope with election stress. And outside with live cam, you're going to notice it as soon as you step out the door this morning. Fall is finally here, everybody. 55 degrees out at the airport. But how much will it warm up later on today? Mike will tell you coming up. Mental health experts with Healthline say people are feeling especially stressed about this year's presidential election. The 2020 election is like no other. According to Choosing Therapy, a professional counseling service, more than half of adults in the United States feel elections are a source for high stress. Licensed therapist says any kind of stress and anxiety can create poor health. Because this election feels so significant, stress levels are higher in adults. Not only can stress affect a person's mental health, it can also produce physical illnesses. Experts say chronic stress and anxiety Anxiety can trigger tension headaches, stomach aches, insomnia, and elevated blood pressure. Also, talking to others about your feelings is a great way to cope. They say as you share the tensions and negative emotions you're feeling, it's important to also focus on the positives. Unplugging from social media can also help if you're feeling overwhelmed. Limiting your exposure can help you reconnect with peaceful thoughts. Just remember, you're not alone. It's okay to seek help. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's quarter past the hour. And things were looking okay on the roadways earlier. How are they looking now, Officer Marcus Trujillo? Still looking pretty good. Now, traffic is starting to pick up ever so slightly in some areas. Not enough to really uh, show up on the map yet, except way up there on the north side. So look wide up there along uh, 1604, just east of 281 above the banner. You can see slight slowdowns there around 1604 and Bulverde on those eastbound main lanes. But other than that, it's not too bad out there. 37 at Indian Hills, north and southbound lanes have more than enough room out there. 37 at Carolina, just a little bit busier. And as we check out one more camera, there we go. 1604 at Houseman started to see slight increases in both directions on Loop 1604. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, Mike's forecast this morning uh, comes with fashion advice as well. All right. Jacket, sweater, <laughs> sweatshirt, something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. Good and call. Then, <laughs> and then you won't need it by this afternoon, but then you'll need it again today. So uh, layering. Just, just one, Mark, not all of them. 
Right, right, right. <laughs> Not today. That's what the 80s were for, right? <laughs> yes, read my mind. And you popped the collar too, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, you did. No, yes, no you did. comment, no comment. Yeah, Picture no, shortly to come. You know darn well with his Ray-Bans and stuff. Anyway, uh, the Wayfair is 52 this morning yeah, is what I'm going for. And uh, we've already got some 40s in parts of the Hill Country, then 81 later on this afternoon. So we're going to be gaining kind of across the board 25, 30 degrees between the low and the high. Oh, darn it, my KSAC Connect picture. The old string and two coffee cans Wi-Fi didn't work out there. Anyway, look at this picture. It's absolutely gorgeous, and we're going to have a fantastic sunrise this morning as well. And, you know, temperatures... It is, we're about 10 degrees below normal, and this is some of the coldest air we have seen since all the way back in April. Now, uh, earlier this month on the 10th, we got down to 57 degrees. That was a little bit of an anomaly because we had so much rain the day before, just over an inch of rain here in town, picked up uh, six tenths that day. So it was a lot of uh, rain cooled air that put us down to 57. But then going back into May, May the 10th, 57 degrees. And so obviously we're colder than that. So the coldest we've been all the way back since the end of April when we got down to 53. And like I said, I'm thinking we're going to be down in that neighborhood before it's all uh, said and done. All right, here's what is going on with uh, some of the other areas. We are 47 degrees right now in Hondo, Uvalde 55, Carrizo Springs 57 degrees. Everybody is enjoying this beautiful weather after that front move through right about this time yesterday. All right, out in the tropics, even though there are just a couple little uh, spots of some clouds out there, Hurricane Center says there's nothing that is uh, going to be forming up within the next couple of days, at least no tropical development. Hopefully there is something, and this is really jumping ahead into the future, by mm, about the middle to latter part of next week that may start to brew in the uh, Gulf of Mexico and kind of come on in here to give us at least a rain chance. But that's, again, still a long way off, obviously. Now, as far as temperatures around the country, Still not the coldest that we've seen because remember a couple of weeks ago it was in about 20 degrees colder up there in International Falls, but a good chunk of the country is seeing some really, really nice fall temperatures as of right now. And the best news is this is going to be sticking around for the next couple of days. We'll have another nice brisk morning tomorrow. When was the last time you said brisk morning? That's great. 76 today at noon, so we warm up very quickly this morning as the sun continues to get up high because all this dry air that's in place heats up very, very quickly. And then we top off at 81 degrees. Normal high is mid to upper 80s, so well below that. Plenty of sunshine. Just open up the windows and enjoy this day. And tomorrow, we start off same situation, mid 50s, same thing Thursday morning. Now it's not going to be quite as cool as we go into Friday and the weekend with temperatures staying in the low 60s, still about uh, maybe a degree or two below normal. And that's because just slightly more humidity, not like you're going to walk outside and sweat or anything like that, but just it won't be able to get as cool and we'll still have high temperatures even though we peak on Thursday over the weekend. It's going to be uh, right about mid 80s. Well, that was beautiful. A great stretch. So we know you were tap dancing in July, August, September, waiting for these kinds of days, <laughs> and you made it. They're here. Finally. Because we had the front before, right, mm -hmm, which, was which nice. didn't last that long, right. and this one's all week long. And all west. Mm -hmm. We are enjoying the change. Right now, 620, 55 degrees. And coming up, a 90210 star speaking out after revealing her breast cancer has returned. After the break, how she's dealing with the fight during a pandemic. Is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Talk. You want to walk? <laughs> When the whole family needs an excuse to get out, Nutro's Clean Recipe will help your dog keep up. Every time you touch a surface, bacteria is left behind. Now consider how many times your family touches the surfaces in your home in 24 hours. Try Microban 24. Spray on hard surfaces to kill 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria initially. Once dry, it forms a bacteria shield that keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours, even after multiple touches. Try Microban 24. Available in multi-purpose sanitizing and bathroom sprays. This has been Medifax for Microban 24. 
when migraine strikes, there's Quick Dissolve Nurtec. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. Side effects include nausea. To pay as little as $0, go to Nurtec.com. And this morning's GMA First Look has been nearly nine months since actress Shannon Doherty revealed to us that her breast cancer had returned. It's a bitter pill to swallow in a lot of ways. I would say that my first reaction is always concern about how am I going to tell my mom, my husband. You're worried about everyone else around you. I think so. Yeah. And this morning, Good Morning America is the first place you'll hear about how she's dealing with the fight of her life during a global pandemic. Doherty revealing to Elle magazine in an exclusive new interview that she's been quarantining in her Malibu home, saying, quote, I try to treasure all the small moments that most people don't really see or take for granted. The small things are magnified for me. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what the 90210 star is saying about her health, her family, and why she's not ready to give up her fight anytime soon. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. If you recently had trouble logging into your Microsoft account, it's because there was a major outage. The company says it's resolved an incident which blocked many users from several Microsoft 365 services, including Outlook email. The government cybersecurity unit says the outage was not part of a coordinated campaign. Google plans to officially unveil its new streaming device at an event tomorrow, but reports say Chromecast is already being sold at some retailers, including Walmart and Home Depot. The device features a new oval design and remote. It's selling for about $50. And the original Farmville on Facebook is shutting down. It launched in 2009 and at the height of its popularity, about 30 million people were playing each day. Current players can continue tending to their crops and everything else until the game shuts down on New Year's Eve. In your morning sports, Houston Astros play their first game of the 2020 MLB postseason today. They take on the Twins at 1 this afternoon, and you can watch it right here on KSAT 12. The Astros qualified for the postseason despite having a losing record in the pandemic-shortened season. Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup last night, beating the Dallas Stars. Lightning beat the Stars 2-0 in Game 6 of the Finals. It is Tampa's first Stanley Cup win since 2004. Wow, but we are sorry to all the Dallas Stars fans out there. Yep. Time now, 626 and 55 degrees for now. A new Bearfax KSAT San Antonio report poll is out, and, and we'll see in the next half hour how San Antonians feel about the upcoming ballot propositions. And we're getting ready for the first presidential debate this evening. We're going to get a preview and tell you how you can watch it. was no random shooting. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They say the shooter involved in that Northeast side case called the victim by name. I'll tell you more about it. And coming up, it's the first debate between Joe Biden and President Trump. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with more on what to expect. And outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up, layer up South Texas. We're seeing temperatures in the 50s and even 40s around the KSAT 12 viewing area on this early Tuesday morning. And good morning to you. It is September 29th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And if you hadn't had a chance yet, you should definitely step outside. It's very nice change from yesterday morning. That mug of coffee is going to feel extra good in your hands this morning, Mike Osterhage. Yep, it is just glorious when you uh, step outside. The sun is not going to be coming up for about another hour. We're not seeing the glow as of yet, but oh, it's going to be just a spectacular sunrise this morning. Temperature right now stands at 55 degrees. The dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, Yesterday morning, right before that front moved through, this number was up to 75. It was just miserably humid yesterday. And then the front came through and cleared all that humidity out of here. And that's one reason why it is so pleasantly cool. And yeah, there's some of the 40s up there. 45 Kerrville, Comfort, Balverde at 46 degrees. And Canyon Lake still kind of holding in there at 60, 47 also in Honda. We may drop down another uh, couple of notches before it's all said and done. So clear and cool and wonderful this morning. Then sunshine, low 80s later on today. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And tomorrow, another chilly start. Absolutely beautiful again. Same thing on Thursday. Low temperatures won't be quite as cool as we go into Friday and the weekend, but still we're looking at some fantastic weather. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Marcus Trujillo, nothing? 
Right now, it looks pretty good okay. on the highway, so the highway's no issues, but we're starting to see some increases in the traffic. Now, the construction picked up there, I-10 at La Cantera, but as you can see, starting to get very, very busy, both in the east and the westbound lane. So if you are headed out, don't forget, make sure you buckle up that seatbelt and watch that follow distance. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police believe a gunman knew exactly who his target was. And late last night, that person took aim at a man on the northeast side. The victim was shot in the leg outside a home on a street called Pleasant Bay. Our Katrina Weber is at Public Safety Headquarters Live. Katrina, have police made any progress in finding the shooter? No, the shooter got away in a black sedan. It doesn't look like police know why the shooting happened either. But again, they say that it looks like the shooter knew who he was targeting. Witnesses told police that just before pulling the trigger, the shooter called the victim by name. The man who was shot was one of three people standing outside a home on Pleasant Bay after 11 last night. Police say there were two or three people in the sedan when it pulled up to that home. One of them called to the victim, then shot him, uh, and again hitting him in the leg. The victim was taken to a hospital by ambulance, but police say it appears that he should be okay. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Just into our newsroom, we have the mugshot of the man involved in a standoff last night. Christian Rodriguez is facing first degree felony murder charges in connection to stabbing his father to death. We first brought you the story yesterday when a neighbor found the victim with multiple stab wounds to his upper body. This happened in the 25,000 block of Whistling Acres in North Bear County. When police got to the scene, they say Rodriguez barricaded himself with a knife inside his house before peacefully surrendering. Rodriguez's bond has been set at $250,000. The latest Bear Facts KSAT San Antonio report poll is now out. In our last half hour, we heard about the results for some of the big races in the November election. But if you live in San Antonio, there are some proposals you will vote on as well. Free K for SA, public transportation and workforce program all on the ballot this November. The first proposition is a sales tax to help fund pre-K for SA early childhood education program. This would fund the program for eight years with the revenue from a 1 8th percent tax. Now, 66% of San Antonio voters that were polled say they are in favor of the tax. Overall, 46% say they will definitely vote yes. 18% say they will probably vote yes. And 2% say they are undecided, but lean towards supporting the tax. Meanwhile, 25% of polled voters say they do not support the program. 18% are definitive. 5% will probably vote no. And 2% are undecided, but lean against the tax. Next proposition focuses on sales tax. This one's for an advanced transportation district, which should help via increased services, operations, and fund better equipment in San Antonio. However, if the proposition passes, the rate would increase from one eighth of a percent to three eighths of a percent over the next six years. 35% of vote, voters polled say they definitely support the proposition. 19% say they probably will vote yes, and 4% are leaning towards supporting it. Meanwhile, 19% say they do not support the prop. Nine percent say they would probably vote no and two percent lead toward voting no and proposition b on the ballot in november is to reallocate a current sales tax to fund the ready to work sa workforce program the goal is to provide a job training and scholarships for san antonians in total 64 percent of polled voters support the tax 25 percent do not you can find all these results on the latest bear facts ksat san antonio report poll right now on ksat.com. First presidential debate between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden is tonight. The two candidates will go head to head in Cleveland, Ohio. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has what we can expect. And good morning. Much like the presidential debates from 2016 between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, things could get personal. But there are still so many issues on the table for voters. So for the candidates, tonight has the potential to change the course of this election. This morning, final preparations are underway for the first presidential debate, and it will be unlike any other in modern American history because of the coronavirus pandemic. Joe Biden and President Trump will not shake hands. There will be no opening statements and very few in the crowd. Biden says he's prepared for the gloves to come off. He's going to want to make it personal. He's going to want to get in the mosh pit. I'm going to talk about why I want to be president of the United States. 
The candidates' approach about as different as the candidates themselves. Biden taking time off the trail to get ready. But Trump rolling with his rallies, taking his message right to his supporters. How many hours would you say you've spent on well, the you know, A little time. I mean, not a lot. More or less than 16. I'm running the country. I'm, I don't, you know, I don't have the luxury. Trump and Biden are coming face to face for the first time this campaign, while the presidential race is tightening in some key battleground states. A new ABC News Washington Post poll shows Biden getting a big boost from women in Pennsylvania. The president has repeatedly said that his tax returns are under IRS audit and tweeted that he has very little debt compared to the value of his assets. As for tonight's debate, moderator Chris Wallace will give the first question to President Trump. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. And starting at 8 this evening, you can watch it live right here on KSET 12. We will also live stream the debate on KSET.com and KSET TV. You can just download the KSET app on Roku, Apple TV, or other smart devices. If you miss it, we'll have the top moments from the debate tomorrow morning right here on GMSA. 638, 55 degrees. And coming up next, looking for a job while being a full-time parent. We're going to tell you a few tips to make the process run a little easier. Juggling a job search and being a full-time parent is hard, but according to experts with Healthline, there are a few ways to make the process run smoother. First, set up a new email account just for job hunting. That's because it can be easy to miss a work-related email if it's also your personal email address. This can help you stay organized. Second, prioritize your task. When it comes to your job search, it can feel overwhelming. Write down the most important things you need to get done. This can help you check things off your to-do list without having to multitask. Next, try reaching out to friends from past jobs. This is a great way to stay connected in the corporate world. Finally, learn a new skill. Experts recommend keeping up with new technologies and continuing your professional education. Not only will you have an updated resume, it will show employers you are still excited to learn new things. Most importantly, be confident and take time to relax. By staying strong, you'll carry yourself with more confidence and make a better first impression. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. The pandemic actively changing how students learn and how parents manage their children during the day. It also impacts how teachers create their lesson plans and run their classrooms, either in person or remotely or both. And to help us understand those changes, Doris Naquin, a first grade teacher at Briscoe Elementary School, joins us live this morning. Good morning. Hi, Doris. Good morning. Well, first off, how do you get set up to start teaching? Are there extra steps with facilitating Zoom and in-person instruction at the same time? There definitely is, and a lot of it has to do with if the kids are actually participating in that online activity or if they're independently doing something. So it's a matter of making sure that they have what they need to get going in the classroom before you ever even hop online with the virtual students. How challenging is it to conduct in-person learning and remote instruction at the same time, Doris? I mean, how do you keep students engaged if they can't be in the same room? Um, a lot of it has to do with still making sure that you're still letting them lead in their instruction. If they were in the classroom, they would be leading in it and it wouldn't just be you talking to them. So the biggest thing is remembering when you are virtually teaching is that it's still them that needs to be leading the lesson. They need to understand what they're learning. They need to be able to explain it and interact with it. It's not just sitting on the camera and talking back and forth, but really making sure that they're leading the lesson with you. And sometimes we understand there could be internet issues. Is there a homework policy if there are internet issues? So we're very fortunate that our district does provide hotspots for all the kids. But of course, like we know, internet goes down all the time. So we do record all of our lessons. They are put online for them to be able to get to at any point that they need them. And then especially in the lower grades, our students have actual work that they're writing on and whatnot as well. So even if they're not able to do, say, a digital activity online, they have the packet work to do at home. Do you think it's easier to do all virtual or all in-person instruction? Uh, I prefer all in-person instruction. <laughs> it's definitely easier to do yeah. one or the other. Um, the hybrid is definitely the most difficult to do, uh, but I definitely prefer the in-person instruction. And on that note, when would you feel comfortable having a full classroom full of students again? Um, honestly, I feel comfortable now. It's not necessarily the popular opinion, 
Um, but our school has done a phenomenal job at upholding our safety routines. You know, every student has their temperature checked before they're allowed in the school. They have a mask on. They are sanitized before they come in. We have six feet apart um, and we've had no issues and it's been it's been going really well. That's good to hear. Again, thank you, Doris Naquin at Briscoe Elementary. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Doris. Good thank luck you. with the rest of the academic year. We will definitely be thinking about you and all those other hardworking instructors out there. That's right. It's been a very different year. Let's check on traffic. It is exactly 645. Here's Marcus. Well, we've got a couple of things <laughs> going on, so let me get this uh, set so we can go through them. Uh, we've got two major accidents coming in. Here's the first one. Uh, this one is a rollover accident that does include a pedestrian being struck. That's going to be down there on the south side, close to Toyota. That's uh, Apple White at South South Samora Street, right at the intersection. So look for a number of emergency vehicles responding to that one. Then we have the second major. This is also a motor vehicle pedestrian accident. This is going to be just outside 410 Culebra Road at Ingram Road. So at both those locations, watch for a large number of emergency vehicles at the scene. Thank you very much, Marcus. And Mike is smiling extra big today because of these autumn temperatures. Yeah, it's just fantastic. And even going yesterday, going back to yesterday, we still had a lot of those clouds hanging around here. And OK, here's what the caption says. No matter how big, bright, bold or small, Medina Lake has the best sunsets. I'm sure some people might question, but you know what? They're all beautiful. So but yeah, that that. <laughs> Pretty darn good looking there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Speaking of the uh, sun and sunrises, this is going to be a dandy one out there. Look at that orange glow out there. We don't have a cloud in the sky, and uh, the humidity is just so, so dry. The atmosphere is so dry. Dew points are down in the 30s and 40s, and they're actually going to be uh, dropping down even further throughout the day with this dry air that continues to come on in here. That's going to set us up then for not only a big warm up throughout the day because dry air doesn't hold the heat in as well, but it heats up a lot more easily. It doesn't take as much energy to heat up dry air as it does moist air. Also, um, that's just going to help out with the, uh, the beautiful day today, not only down here at the surface, but also aloft in the atmosphere. We've got some bone dry air upstairs as well. There may be, I mean, a little high, you know, little milky shade out there in portions of the hill country, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it's going to be just a gorgeous shade of blue today. And we had those few leftover clouds, and as you can see, as this loops back on through, there's the uh, clouds that uh, got on out of here overnight. And with no blanket on top of us, that has allowed temperatures to drop down. And we're not going to have any blanket tonight as well. So it's going to be another very chilly morning tomorrow. Around the country, well, you can pick out where the front is right here, associated with a big low sweeping around in the Great Lakes. And then the high pressure ridge is off there to the west of us. So in between, you get that good roller coaster action in the upper level steering winds. Just think you know, it wasn't too long ago. These this jet stream right here, this is kind of the dividing line between the cool air and the warm air was right there along the uh, US Canadian border and it wasn't doing anything. And that's why we were kind of stuck in the doldrums there for a while. But now we've got the cool air in place and like I said, it's going to be cool tomorrow morning. Then it's going to be, you know, huge warm up throughout the day. As we go on into Thursday, we will warm up a little bit more progressively each and every day. So Thursday, I think we peak uh, upper 80s, close to 90 for a high temperature. Then going into Friday and Saturday, I get sort of a little bit of a now well, reinforcing little chunk of cool air just to kind of keep temperatures in check. So we'll stay in the mid 80s Friday through the weekend. Low temperatures, though, with the humidity kind of creeping up ever so slightly, are not going to be as cool going into the weekend. We'll stay uh, right around low 60s, still at or even a degree or two below normal, but not like what we're seeing as of right now. And that's going to be the situation in the first part of next week as well. Now, the downside of the forecast is no rain. There's nothing uh, as it look, looks right now, now through the weekend and into the first part of next week. Hopefully by the middle part of next week, we kind of get the Gulf to open up a little bit more to get something coming on in here to give us a chance for some rain. And that's sort of wishful thinking as of right now, still, you know, eight, 10 days away. Today, 76 degrees at noon. Sunny skies, absolutely beautiful out there. And later on, 81 for a high temperature, well below normal. Low humidity, open up the windows, sensational day. Same thing tomorrow, we start off mid 50s. Same thing on Thursday, warm up very quickly and a whole bunch throughout the day. The weekend, we stay in the low 60s and high temperatures in the mid 80s. 
Enjoy, enjoy, and enjoy. Some people's oh. teeth are chattering right now. <laughs> no. I know. Some people say it's cold, but I, I'm enjoying it. I nice think, break. I think it's refreshing, too, but 55 feels like 35 for some diehard South Texans. That's true. Beats 100. Sure. That does. is Not true. Not for everybody, also. though. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now, 650, 55 degrees. And it's that time of year for our little ghosts and goblins to come out for Halloween. But the pandemic is affecting some people's holiday activity plans. We're going to tell you how tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam, we'll get you updated on the news you need to know before you go. And there is the beginning of that Tuesday morning sunrise live right here on GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, President Trump and Joe Biden getting ready to face off in prime time in their very first presidential debate after that blockbuster report on the president's taxes. Our political team will be covering it all, including the last minute preparations for the debate. Chris Christie, Rahm Emanuel weighing in this morning right here on GMA. In the news you need to know before you go, one person is in the hospital after a drive-by shooting on the northeast side. Police say it happened in the 6700 block of Pleasant Bay. That's near Seguin and Walsham Roads, not far from Woodlake Hills Middle School. Police say two men and a woman were standing outside when a black sedan pulled up. They say someone inside that car yelled out a name and then people inside that car started shooting. One person was hit in the leg and taken to Bamsey. The shooters sped off and police are still looking for them. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, mental health issues are mounting in the wake of COVID-19, making it a priority discussion nationwide. But some ethnic groups are historically hesitant to seek help. A local psychologist told our Courtney Friedman the stigma of mental illness and seeking counseling is prevalent in the black community. Courtney will join us live to debrief her story at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's check traffic live right now at 5 till with Marcus. Well, we still have those two major accidents in the clearing stages. This one down here close to Toyota. That's going to be WW White at South South Samora, and that's going to be right at the intersection. It is a motor vehicle pedestrian accident. And one of those vehicles did roll over. And then we also have another motor vehicle pedestrian accident. This is going to be outside 410 Uncle Liver Road right there in Ingram. We do have uh, our own Katrina Weber on the way to that scene to get us get us some more details. Mike. Thank you, sir. We uh, actually bumped up one degree here in town 56, but drop down Comfort and Honda are both at 44 right now. 50 Bandera, 45 in Kerrville. We are going to be uh, hitting a high temperature today in the low 80s, but we're just going to take a look at this picture as the uh, sun is thinking about coming up in about a half an hour. Absolutely beautiful bone dry air out there. Gorgeous orange glow, plenty of blue skies throughout the day today. And this nice weather is going to last as well the next couple of days because we'll be down in the 50s again tomorrow, well up into the mid to upper 80s. So huge warm ups throughout the day and a good looking weekend as well. Thank you, Mike. Beautiful. Real quick, wanted to thank Doris Naquin with SAISD for joining us live this morning and thank all the teachers for all you do. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.